We can move on to a second patient. So this is a 44-year-old woman who presents with metastatic leiomyosarcoma, um, a lot of disseminated metastasis within the lung. Started off treatment with Docs Olara. Um, maybe we could say for if a uterine, John, you may have started with docstacarbazine or docstacarbazine or doxolara. Docstacarbazine, there olara. you go. And if they pres they progress on that frontline anthracycline-based regimen, what are some of the options for this patient? Clinical trials always for all these patients. Always considering yeah. clinical trials. If I have a clinical trial for them, that's kind of my first step for them. Yeah irrespective of anything else. But other than that, you know, uh, gemcitabine and those stacks will work exceedingly well. Yeah, the Ganju regimen works beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> Having trained with person I have used it before, but I, I still use, utilize the, the, the day one, day eight. Uh, yeah, and, and again, some of the, our Spanish colleagues had a very nice JCO looking at mm -hmm. gemcitabine and decarbazine. Yeah. So if you didn't use decarbazine, you have tolerable. a problem. It's a very so highly tolerable. It's a good regimen. So gemcitabine-based regimen would be something that would be more likely second-line therapy for you, it sounds like. And then what about subsequent lines of therapy? What are our options? So decarbazine for mostly single Agent single agent can have single activity agent. as well. And also pisopinib, again, going back to our mm -hmm. being underutilized. Right. You know, so Tr pisopinib is, is also very and trabectidin. And, and almost like immunotherapy, there's a very long tail. So we have some patients that are on trabectidin for years, yeah. and, it, and, and they can tolerate it for years, even in their 80s. And so that, that if they have that, uh, that phenotype of their disease where they get responses to trabectidin, that's a, that's a great outcome for them. Yeah, they can actually do definitely. quite well. Definitely, well, yeah. we, we use a lot of trabectidin and it's highly effective in this situation. One, one situation, for instance, if this patient may have been seen elsewhere and did not get doxorubicin alera in frontline, perhaps doxodecarbazine, mm -hmm. and then I'm seeing them after gem dosi, after votrian, after trabectidin, um, I, I would also consider going back to doxorubicin plus alera. If, they've, if they're alera naive, um, why not rechallenge them? It could be a different clone that has taken over. Sure, rechallenging yeah, is with a lot of particularly agents. Particularly patients that are alive four or five years out, they yeah. haven't seen a drug for several years. I and, would definitely and, go back to the different drugs. Yeah, and we don't, and, and we're comfortable doing that. We do use dextrazoxane, cardioprotection, or we do use 72-hour infusion when patients are treated with any doxorubicin so that we, so that we have more, more room under the curve before the, the risk of cardiomyopathy starts What about a phosphamine, right? We, we haven't mentioned that drug. That's a go-to drug. It's, it's tough to give. It's, it's a, it's, it, you know, I typically give it as an inpatient. Uh, for some reason, at altitude, I have a lot more encephalopathy than most, and so I have a hard time giving it. And, it, and frankly, it's just not that effective for lyomyosarcoma that I think it's yeah. worth the toxicity. Well, one of the other ways to give ifosfamide is a 14-day continuous infusion mm -hmm. outpatient mm -hmm. where they get 1,000 no, milligrams per yeah, meter squared, and they mm -hmm. have this little bag in infusion. And you know, we've had some good responses yeah. with that. But going back to olaritumab, one of the things that has been challenging is if the patient has had complete uh, dose of adromycin in the past, then you're you want to give olaritumab to them. It's really hard to get insurance authorization with olaritumab with any other chemotherapy um, because of the, the lack of data. But hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to add it to other chemotherapy drugs because it doesn't make any sense to me for it to just be lumped in with doxorubicin. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. so and there's, there's a study the ongoing right now looking at gemcitabine, yep. dostaxel, plus exactly. minus alertamab. So hopefully we'll have we'll more have data. data soon. Yeah. I would have no reservations going back to doxorubicin yeah, if the patient has had the 450 or whatever and you're... Good. And that's what I've been doing. I, would, I give a couple of doses of doxorubicin with alertamab and then I go to maintenance alertamab. So at least I have my insurance people, I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the data would suggest though, that the benefit of laritumab is from with longer exposure with, with doxorubicin. So. Right, but sense. if you've had 450, then I yeah. think I'm comfortable giving another two cycles, another 150. So, so typically Just if I see somebody who's had an anthracycline, if they've had 450, I'll actually push them to the, six, to the 600, yeah. you know, and, and, and then transition. But, 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 but I, that's I, correct. I would say just do the echo. I have a patient I saw last week who's had 1,600 milligrams per meter squared doxorubicin and has no cardiomyopathy at all. So it's, it's idiosyncratic, not everybody's gonna get it. If the patient needs an active drug, I would not let a, so a potential yeah. theoretical problem stop me from treating a patient who needs, needs therapy. So, so let me but just... the ifosfamide data, and in, in, in this is subset analyses, 
is not that active in non-uterine leiomyosarcoma. Yeah, so I, I think that was uterine. The, there's some activity. There's the point, and and primary bone uh, leiomyo, although mm -hmm. very rare, there's some activity. I agree. Thanks. I was right. just going to say, so so we've heard we heard gemcitabine-based regimen, trebectidin, decarbazine, pazopinib. So, so what about aribulin? Well, so oh, off-label, right? It's off-label. Um, but I think at least in the phase three study where aribulin was compared to, to decarbazine, which was it's thought to be an active version. comparator, um, it, it had similar outcomes. So I think it certainly- It says active it, as decarbazine. It's, it's active. Decarbazine I wouldn't say it's inactive. inactive. If right. you're gonna consider decarbazine, then I think you consider yeah. aribulin. The challenge, at least at our institution, uh, uh, is again, off-label use. The, the, the insurance companies are, are becoming increasingly um, stringent in wanting to know for, for pazopinib, have you had prior chemotherapy? Um, for uh, aribulin, what is the histology? Right, um, right. So it's, we're getting very specific on that. I think the other thing, um, Bill, with the uh, leiomyosarcomas is that this is uh, the part that I agree with, Rich, in terms of immunotherapy with the Pianuvo. This is the group that I wouldn't give immunotherapy to off trial just because in the past they haven't Interestingly, really right, so for, uh, clearly with the single agent checkpoint inhibitors, there were maybe a few extra responses with the combination, but still not a disease that we think generally sensitive to checkpoint inhibition, right? So there's a lot of work we need to do to understand that, and there's a lot of ongoing studies.